Since the beginning of time, man has searched the earth for evidence of its past. While Jurassic Park was fantasy, 20 years later in real life, a Russian team uncovered a 39,000-year-old woolly mammoth in Siberia. The Ice Age creature was neatly preserved in permafrost. Its DNA could lead to the rebirth of the massive elephant-like animal that disappeared 10,000 years ago. George Church is a professor of genetics at Harvard Medical School. When you get into the freezing category, there's a wishful thinking that someday you'll find a cell that's intact or a nucleus from a cell, a little piece of the cell that's intact. But these specimens have been dead for so many years, there's been no repair processes and they're constantly being bombarded by uh, cosmic radiation. And even if they were intact, nucleated cells with DNA in them, the DNA could still be so uh, damaged that it can't live. So. Uh, we don't depend on it getting intact DNA or intact cells. We just need enough information to read it into the computer, and then the computer puts it together, and then you synthesize it. All the break breaks are, are healed by the synthesis route. While the likelihood of finding an intact cell is low, Professor Church believes there are still ways to read the DNA, map its genetic code, and take the process one step further. We may use cloning as part of the procedure. Cloning is simply the, so you might engineer a cell that is not reproductive, take the nucleus out of that cell and put it into an egg um, from a, say an African elephant that uh, then will be implanted into a surrogate mother. And uh, that's a very similar procedure that we've used with uh, pigs where we've done dozens of modifications to the pig genome in somatic cells, taken the nucleus out and planted it, and we now have living, large numbers of living pigs that are from that procedure. Another possibility is using synthetic biology, a cutting edge science, combining engineering with biology to create living organisms from chemical ingredients. Professor Rebecca Rogers studies the evolution of genome structure and new gene formation at the University of North Carolina at Charlotte in the Department of Bioinformatics and genomics. The other possibility is to use genetic modification, things like CRISPR or other genetic tools, to take an elephant genome and then change the DNA of the elephant in order to make it look more like a mammoth. One of the problems with this approach is that you have to change one gene at a time or a very few genes at a time. And then there's the chance that you could have off-site effects, off-target effects, where you didn't plan on making a mutation, but you did just by accident. And that can cause genetic modifications that you don't want to see. The initial goal would be to make uh, something that is a hybrid that takes the best features of one species and another. All of these species were probably capable of uh, making fertile offspring in, in, in hybrids. You could come up with an elephant that had long hair instead of the short hair that elephants have now. You could also have it put on more fat and, and insulate itself from the cold. And then there are some other changes in terms of the, the veins and the arteries in the mammoths that were different from elephants that helped them live in the cold. And while scientists may be on the verge of resurrecting the woolly mammoth, it's not without controversy. One of the biggest questions is what's going to happen along the way if you end up with mistakes in the genome modifications. Elephants are extremely intelligent, they're very social, they have this emotional capacity and an, a huge capacity for suffering. And so I think it's inevitable that someone will try this trick to make something that looks like a woolly mammoth, but I hope they'll think about the animals and have plans along the way of what they would do in certain scenarios. Professor Church says he's not trying to bring back the extinct mammoth, but he is hoping a hybrid animal could save the living Asian elephant. The genes can help a currently endangered species to survive um, by giving it the ability to live in the cold where many of its cousins have, have lived in the past, uh, the mammoth. 
Uh, and the Asian elephant is, is quite endangered. It's at risk both because of being in conflict with humans, uh, being in close proximity with high population density, and also with herpes virus, uh, which is killing off up to 80% of the uh, newborns on weaning. It's also a benefit to the, to the environment that we care about, uh, which is the Arctic, which is about 19 million square kilometers of uh, very deep carbon soil. So what we specifically need in the Arctic is to keep the temperature low and the carbon sequestration high. So you want it to photosynthesize, to, to turn the sun's light into a way of capturing the carbon into the roots. And the roots, each year, they, the, the permafrost uh, grows and, and stays frozen. It, so herbivores are needed for maintaining the grass, uh, otherwise the dead grass will kind of cover it up and doesn't photosynthesize well. If you're confused, you're not alone. Grass is good for preventing the melting of the permafrost. Professor Church believes by introducing large grazers, like a hybrid elephant, the Arctic would be converted back to productive grasslands, which would prevent greenhouse gases from being released back into the atmosphere. And so uh, it switched from grass, which was very good at fixing carbon, to trees, which are very good at, at helping the, the snow melt and the snow to insulate in the winter, keeping the cold air out. And so mammoths are one of the few herbivores, uh, you know, uh, that are capable of knocking down trees and do it quite readily. The hybrid mammoth sounds like a remarkable animal, but Rebecca Rogers has concerns about what George Church is trying to do. Some of the synthetic biology, in theory, could be used to rescue animals that have genetic defects. And anytime we see population sizes get very small, then they start to accumulate bad mutations, and it's more likely that all of the animals in your population will be related to one another and will have the same bad mutations, which leads to negative effects. There's, in theory, the possibility of doing some sort of gene therapy for animals, just like people have proposed for humans. Again, that's going to be very, very tricky. Humans don't really have a great record with manipulating nature in the wild. Sometimes we bring one species in to take out another invasive species, and then the thing we brought in wreaks more havoc than we ever thought it could. And there are these unintended effects that we see where we've made mistakes. If this does succeed, and scientists return these woolly mammoth hybrid type creatures to Siberia, Rebecca Rogers has concerns. Who's going to protect them from predators? What other effects will they have on the terrain that we didn't anticipate? What if they spread diseases from one type of animal to another, where there's a, a pathogen, some bacterium or fungus that infects one type of mammal, and it also infects the mammoths, and then they spread it all over Russia? You know, you can see how things could go wrong in ways that you know, maybe you didn't plan on. Do you have contingencies in place for all of those situations? Professor Church is aware of the issues that could arise, but seems confident with responding to the potential negatives. A negative would be uh, if the environment had changed enough that they weren't ready for it. But we're, of course, we're not trying to make something that was ancient. We're trying to make a hybrid that has all the advantages of the, of the modern plus all the advantages of the ancients. A negative would be, what if it's not diverse enough? Well, we have unprecedented diversity, which includes all of the ancient species all over the world. Well, in practice, they usually were only breeding with their contemporaries in time and their nearby neighbors in space. Well, that's no longer necessary. So diversity is something, a negative that we can, a lack of diversity is a negative that we can fix. Hybrid mammoths could grow as big as three and a half meters and weigh about six tons, with their long curved tusks reaching over two and a half meters long. They're herbivores, yes, but are certainly not an animal you want interacting with people. Well, we're proposing to move them to the largest ecosystem in the world with the lowest human population density. So I think every challenge uh, can be turned into an opportunity. The last remaining woolly mammoths fell extinct 4,000 years ago. Scientists have now deciphered the probable reasons. One thing that happened is that the climate changed and it got much warmer and trees started to grow up over the Siberian steppe. 
And woolly mammoths, unlike mastodons and some forest elephants, could not forage in the forest. They needed grasslands, and their teeth were flat, and they were made to grind up grasses so that they could chew cud. But, uh, so as the forest grew up over Siberia, then they lost their habitat and couldn't live in the space that they had anymore. One of the other factors is that humans started to hunt the woolly mammoths and reduce their numbers. Today, it seems humans may wind up bringing the long extinct behemoths back to life. In a groundbreaking experiment earlier this year, Japanese and Russian researchers took 28,000-year-old woolly mammoth cell parts and say they found biological activity preserved for millennia. So there was a recent paper that said that they had found DNA intact in large pieces in cells of a mammoth that was found frozen in the permafrost. When they sequenced the DNA, they still found that it was mostly in small pieces. They then tried to transfer that mammoth DNA into a mouse cell. And this would open up a lot of doors for molecular biology if you could get it to work. It would put mammoth DNA into a mouse cell and you could do all your lab work and your molecular biology to see how the mammoth DNA behaves differently in a cell compared to the mouse DNA. While the mammoth cells did not come back to life to create a clone mammoth, the study, although controversial, is noteworthy. They say that they got a whole chromosome into the mouse, but it's difficult to see from their photographs how they determined that that was actually the mammoth chromosome instead of a highly mutated mouse chromosome. So it's a little bit difficult to see how well it worked. But they got to the first cell division, and then the cell recognized that something was very wrong. And so it shut down the cell and induced cell death. So that didn't progress very far. It's a very interesting idea, and it could lead to a lot of molecular biology in the lab. Getting from the lab to living off the land will take many steps, but could be just a few years away. Once we have the nucleus that's completely programmed and been tested for its uh, viability, then developing it into an embryo could happen within a year. So we could be a couple of years away from testing in embryos, and then if that works, we might uh, be doing implantation shortly after that. It takes 22 months for gestation to occur, and then, uh, then we could have a, a baby a elephant that has uh, woolly mammoth genes in it. Even though bringing back the woolly mammoth from extinction could cause unknown circumstances, Professor Church believes the benefits far outweigh the risks. I myself point out that every new technology, every new, the, the more radical the, the innovation, the more you should be skeptical and concerned. In this particular case, the, the questions that I've raised, as well as other people, is, is are we helping modern species? And the answer is yes. This is an Asian elephant that we're focusing on. Are we helping modern environments? Yes, the Arctic has problems, especially big problems when we're talking about 1,400 gigatons of carbon at risk. Are we going to be able to make enough of them that there will be herds of them? Yes, that's the intention. What if he succeeds? A herd of hybrid mammoths, once again roaming the Arctic, raises all kinds of questions. It's important to keep asking these questions and see if we can think of, is it possible we'd want to reverse it? Yes, we might want to reverse it. So for example, goats were accidentally introduced into the Galapagos. That was reversible. These are large herbivores. It's not like we're introducing bacteria or mold or insects. These things are very easily identified. So when Professor Church finishes creating his massive herd of L mammoths, what's next? The Revive and Restore is a nonprofit group that I work with, they have about a hundred extinct species they have various arguments for and various other scientific teams ready to do it once we demonstrate the, the basic methods. So I would look forward to those, but I, I think that uh, I'm going to have my hands full just making sure that the Arctic is taken care of with the mammoth-like uh, hybrids. Since the end of the last ice age, 130,000 years ago, 300 mammal species have died off. In the next 50 years, humans will cause so many mammal species to go extinct 
that researchers found replacing them will take the Earth three to seven million years. Perhaps Professor George Church and science will get us there just a bit faster.